Hey gorgeous, welcome back to my channel, Soil and Margaritas. I am Roxana and I am the person behind this channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you are coming back to visit again, I am so glad that you're here. And today I am going to show you how I am starting a bunch of seeds. I have a lot of seeds to start today, you guys. So I wanted to make a bunch of different videos, you know, like peppers, flowers, is. but I decided to make just one very long video so grab a coffee grab some wine whatever your drink of choice today is and let me just show you some basics that I'm going to use for all of the seeds that I am starting today I am using these heavy-duty containers these are uh, shallow shallow little trays they're five by five they have holes and I am using these regular six cell containers because I know some of them, how they grow, how quick they grow or how slow they grow. I am going to be using some of these and I'll talk about it as I am doing those seeds. And then I'm going to use one of these 10 by 20 shallow trays as well, where I can bat on water when I need to. And I am going to keep all of the seeds together and I am going to use one of these domes. As I mentioned before, I haven't used these quite in the past few years. I had them last year, I didn't use them, so I am going to try them this year uh, to see how they work. These are like the shorties. These are the, the shorter version. They're not like really tall. And that works perfect because the shell where they, these are going to go, um, they don't really have too much room to go into. But this is how it's going to be finished at the end when I am done with most of the seeds. And I'll probably use two, maybe three, trays I am not sure just yet uh, but I'm going to show you as I go so let me show you what else I'm using I am using regular potty mix choose your favorite type of potty mix or if you decide to use seed study mix that's really up to you whatever works for you today I am using potty mix for everything that I am studying and I find that this potty mix works really well for me Honestly, in the past few years, I have been using seed starting mix to germinate the seeds. And once I am ready to pot those up, I have been using regular potting mix. There were a few times where I ran out of seed starting mix and I used went straight to the potting mix and I didn't see any difference whatsoever in the germination of the seeds or lack of germination. So I decided to just keep the seed starting mix and if you're wondering what kind of potting mix this is because it's nice and soft and fluffy i already sifted this this morning and i found this jigama thingy at the at my local home goods it's uh it was in the office department i think you're supposed to hang this on the wall but but also that's what i use for sifting this to make sure that i get all of those chunks of uh, mulch or wood whatever it's in the in the potting mix that it's uh there's just that are just big pieces and maybe on the way of my seeds germinating. And those things are I'm actually going to throw away outside in my garden beds or in my raised beds because they are because they are not trash. They're just big pieces of wood. But look at how fluffy this is. This is just nice and fluffy. And as I have mentioned before, I like to use a little bit of moist medium. Now some people don't like that word. I don't like to use dry potty mix whenever I'm working with my seeds mainly because I don't really like to breathe all of that stuff whenever I'm working with it and it doesn't have to be soaking wet it's just enough so that it stays together and it's not flying around all over Okay, I am going to start with petunias, whey petunias, and I got two types from Park Seeds. I got a red velour, not really sure that's how you say it, and I got some coral, coral crush. I'm going to like these two combined. I think that they're going to go really, really well together. And I have never uh, done petunias from seeds, so this is going to be first for me. And because I don't know how how well they germinate, I am just going to start every single seed that I got, which there aren't that many. They are pelleted, so they are coated. And I got 10 seeds in each of these packets. So we'll see how they do. I have a total of 30 seeds. Hopefully, hopefully they all germinate. 
uh, I can definitely use them. You know, petunias are one of those things. You can just pop them here and there. And I mean, you always have room for petunias. So I am going to try those here. I'm going to try one seed per uh, little container and fingers crossed, we'll get some germination here in a couple of weeks. Perfect, now that I have all of my containers here filled with regular potting mix, I'm going to make sure to label them. And what I'm using to label these guys is just some uh, masking tape and a Sharpie. Perfect, now that I have all of my containers tagged, hopefully you can see it there. I make sure to add the name and the date of when I started these seeds, you guys, because for me, it is important to know, to see how long they're taking to germinate and, you know, at the end of the season of being in here indoors, I want to see if I need to tweak the day of starting them next year. I might need to start them earlier or I might need to start them way later. And having a date here that reminds me really quick uh, when I started these seeds is always a plus for me. And I have a total of 30 seeds. And that's how many I am going to, to put in these containers. And I am not going to bury this seed. I am not going to cover it with soil. And actually this little container had an extra two seeds. I like that whenever companies add just a couple of extra seeds especially when you only have 10 in the little packets. And it's always, you guys, very, very important that you read the instructions on the back of the packet seeds. This packet says, sow the seeds in shallow rows and do not cover them. Keep the soil evenly moist by watering from the bottom. So that means that they're probably going to need um, light to germinate so I'm just patting them here to make sure that the seed is nice and even with the soil and I am going to spray them very gently and you don't have to do this you don't have to do this step of uh, pressing them down gently but I don't want the seed used to be floating on top of the soil I wanted to make nice contact with the potting mix. Perfect. So these are done. Hopefully, hopefully uh, they, germ they germinate for me well. It says in the packet that it takes seven to 21 days for these seeds to germinate. So they are going to take a while for sure. Then I have Coral Crush, and then I only have one packet of these guys. I don't, hopefully they send me a few extra seeds. Cause I have 12, 12 little containers here. And they send me one extra. So there is only one that doesn't have anything there. And the same thing, I am just going to pat them I'm just going to pat them nicely and gently. So knowing that these guys take a little bit of time from uh, one to three weeks to germinate tells me that they're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to make sure that they have plenty of uh, moist, plenty of water. And that is it for my petunias. Again, this is my first time trying them. We'll see how they do. Hey, are these videos being helpful to you in any way? Would you do me a favor and give it a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment? Also, starting in March of 2023, I am going to be doing a special YouTube live for all of those people that are becoming members of this community. If you're wondering about what that is, just click the button underneath this video where it says join so you can get more information on that. So next I am going to start with my spicy peppers and I am going to use these 5x5 shallow containers. I already got them uh, marked there. It's very, very sunny here. I already have the tag right here on them with my date. And I am going to start some regular poblanos. 
I am going to start some chelta bean peppers for my parents. They love these peppers. I do not uh, keep any of these plants, chelta bean plants for myself. These are all for my parents. And then I am going to start two types of jalapenos. I have Craig's Grande jalapenos. They proved to be very productive for me in the last couple of years, so I am going to repeat those. And also jalafuegos. I love these guys. They're definitely a little bit more spicier than your average jalapeno. And they're a little bit smaller than Craig's Grande. So um, these are the two varieties of jalapenos that I am starting this year. As you can see the tag that I used, just a little piece of tape. And I am gently just patting down the patting mix. The moist patting mix, I added a little bit of water. And this is where hopefully my jalapenos will be germinating. And I have grown these peppers for the last two to three years. I think the jalafuego only two years. But the rest here, I am very familiar on how they grow. And normally what I will do is that uh, I will start my jalapenos and my poblanos or any other spicy pepper uh, together at the same time in the same container. I will just get one container and I will make uh, rows of each variety and I will let those be there. Uh, this very, very small container, if you're wondering, is just for germinating the seeds. Once they are, I don't know, maybe about an inch or so, I will move them into separate permanent containers. But these containers are just to keep the varieties together and get them getting the seeds to germinate. But from my experience last year, Poblano was one of the slowest to germinate. It took about 21 days uh, from the Poblanos to start showing some signs of germination. I almost gave up, honestly. I think day 20, I was, I was done. I was done waiting with them. But the next day I saw some uh, signs of green popping up through the pattern mix. And I just knew that I needed to start these guys in a separate container. Jalapenos are better when it comes to uh, germinating. I feel like within a week you should start seeing some germination happening. And this is right here actually. I got plenty of seeds. These were from two years ago. These were marked for uh, 2021. And the Jalafuegos were marked for 2022. So these are older, older seeds uh, per se. So I am just going to add extra seeds in case some of them don't germinate as well. And chelsea beans, I like I said, these are for my parents. I have uh, grown them for the last couple of years. They're very, very spicy peppers. If you have experience with these guys, you know that they are very spicy, very spicy. And what my mom does, she gets all of the peppers and she makes a paste, which she shares with me. Um, I only get like a little container, like a three ounce container. And that lasts me for a long time because again, it's very, very spicy, but I am growing these plants uh, for her because she can't find them here locally. And one container has 10 seeds, just like the coleus are very, very expensive seeds, but I have some. So I am only going to grow 10 for her. And what I realized last week, I was going to start them last week, but I realized that I only kept the packet and I do that all the time. I keep the packet just to make sure, um, just to remind myself where I got them from. And then um, the next year I think that I have, you know, like a whole thing of seeds here, but this one is empty. So this is the new one that I got for this year. I'm going to hopefully, hopefully I get great germination with these seeds. And like I said, poblano is just the slowest. Um, I don't need a lot of these peppers. I like to use them fresh. I don't like them um, frozen. I don't know, it's just, it's just a personal thing. So I don't do a lot of saving when it comes to spicy peppers. So I know that these seeds are already older. These things are almost three years old and I wanna try to get, for myself, I will say that I wanna get two plants. That's really all I need. The plants produce really, really well. But knowing that these seeds are older seeds, I am going to put, I'm going to put eight seeds in here and we'll see how they do. Honestly, I think they're just going to be fine. And if I end up with eight plants of poblano peppers, I'll just give some away. It isn't really that big of a deal for me. 
And the same thing for the chiltepin. All every single every single plant of chiltepin peppers that I get are all going to go to my parents. And we'll see. So again, uh, Baker's Creek has a packet of 10 seeds. They mark it as 10 seeds, but I am definitely seeing more than 10 seeds in here. So I have a total of 20 seeds in here, even though the packet says 10, which I am always thankful because if I get a low germination, let's say that I get 50% germination, I am going to get a total of 10 plants, which is what I'm going for. Last year, I grew 32 plants of these peppers, 32, you guys, and my parents got 32 plants. So this year, when I talked to her, she mentioned only to give her 10 plants, that she couldn't keep up with all of the production of the plants. And I am just going to gently press them down into the potting mix and I'm just going to cover them. And again, this container is only for germinating the seeds. If you wanted only, I don't know, two plants, you could use a very, very small container. I'm just doing it here because I am giving the plants a chance to spread a little bit so that if I'm busy and they need to be potted up, they at least get the room to grow a little bit bigger. And the same thing for the poblanos. If I only, if I knew that I had fresh poblano seeds, I will probably start only four seeds in a very, very small container. But because these are older seeds, I am going to assume that the germination is not the best as year one. So I am adding extra seeds and I am kind of hoping that they all do well. And if they all do well, then I, uh, I have plenty of room for them to grow here. I already divided this tag for this side is going to be Craig's Grande. And for this side right here is going to be the Jalafuegos. There we go. So that's where I'm going to start. And again, I don't need that many. If I just need Two plants, I am going to put five seeds in here. We'll see how they do. And because I am trying to keep them on this side of the container, I'm just going to make a row of them. There you go. And I'm going to try more of these. And again with these seeds. And the same thing with these seeds, I'm just going to make a row of them. And that's it for my spicy peppers. Again, I don't really start a lot of these peppers for myself. I like to eat them fresh. I don't like to save them. I just don't, per that's just a personal choice. But here are all of my peppers and they are ready to germinate. And this tray right here where I have my petunias and my spicy peppers, it's going to be covered with this humidity dome, like this. The next seed that I, I am starting is yarrow. Isn't that just beautiful? Now, this flower right here for me is a perennial. This one is a perennial in zones two through nine. So if you live in those zones and if you want to start a beautiful, beautiful cut flower, medicinal and pollinator attractor flower, yarrow is a great, great choice for you. Now let me show you what I did with it. Um, today is February 6th. On February 1st, I grabbed some seeds and I put them in a wet paper towel. I folded the paper towel I put them in a Ziploc bag and they went in the freezer for one day. One day after, on February 2nd, I took them out and I put them under my LED lights, just like this. I closed the Ziploc bag right here. And I did this because a lot of perennials need a period, a period of stratification. And what that means is that they just need to go through a very, very cold period for a very long time. But I did not have the time to put, you know, 
my seeds for six to eight weeks in the fridge. Normally you will put them in the fridge, that's what people do, but I didn't have that time to do that and because I already got the seeds very late in the season. So I need to start these like now, but I also need them to give them that period of uh, cold. I didn't know if that was going to work for Yarrow, uh, but I did it, I put them in the freezer and I left them here and that was on February 1st again. And again, that was done in the first day of February. And I am going to show you today that for five days they have been under my LED lights. And you'll see the results. I actually just gave them water this morning. Can you see that? Look at all that germination. Hopefully you can see that. Look at that. All of those seeds, most of them, I will say, I will say 80% of them are germinated. Look at that. So they are very, very tiny seeds. And what I'm going to do is that I am going to dig these guys out of the, out of that mess in the paper towel and I am going to plant them. This is the first time that I do jarro, so I am not sure if they are normally very easy to germinate. And knowing that they're a perennial and that they need that period of cold, I just did it. I, again, I'm not sure if these are super easy to, to germinate. And what I'm going to do is that I am going to put multiple seeds in here. And even if I get, I don't know if you can see it here, even if I get a tiny, tiny bed of uh, paper towel, that's okay because they're just going to grow through it. And I have plenty of seeds to choose from here. Now, whenever I have a new flower or vegetable that I wanna grow from seed, I do a little bit of research on it before starting it because I want to see how how people do with that specific plant growing it from seed. I am not too much looking into knowing how to grow it. I mean pretty much you put it with with potting mix or seed starting mix and you hope that the seed grows, right? But sometimes each flower, each seed requires a little bit of preparation to get the best uh, results as far as germinating. And that's what I look for whenever I watch other people's uh, videos on how they're growing certain, a certain flower or vegetable that I haven't grown before because I like to see the results. And this one lady, um, while I was looking to learn how to grow lavender from seed, and this one lady did this with all of her perennials. With every perennial that she grew from seed, she just did the one day freezer technique and she said that she got great results every year doing that so I figured since I didn't have the weeks to put the seeds in the fridge that I was going to do the one day so here we are with uh, Yero and this guy is is doing amazing so far hopefully hopefully I don't kill any of these seeds because they're very very small and again, I'm putting multiple of these uh, germinated seeds here. So this is going to take me a while, you guys. I am just going to try to move as many of these uh, germinated seeds into little containers, multiple seeds in uh, each little container. If I do see that they are growing beautifully, I might just divide them and I'll have plenty of yarrow for this year. Okay, so that definitely took me a little bit longer than I expected. These yarrow seeds are so, so tiny. And I am hoping that they do well here. I am trying to go for 12 plants, but I have several of seeds that already germinated here in the little, in each little container. So if they all come back nicely and they are growing very well together. I might just separate these two in half and I'll end up with 24 plants. I am very, very happy with how Gerald turned out to germinate with the uh, freezing one day. So 
We'll see, I have a couple of other two perennials that I also did that at the same time, and some of them are showing signs, some of them are not, but I'll have to show you that next week whenever I show you the results. But so far, very, very happy with Jero. Did you know that you can start lemongrass from seed? I know there are a lot of people overwinter their lemongrass. I am not one of them. I am not very good with keeping plants over winter, especially if I have to dig them out or save the tubers, the rhizomes, the roots, whatever those plants are. I am not the best on doing that. But lemongrass, I have been growing lemongrass from seed for at least three years now. I can't remember if I started lemongrass from seed year one, but definitely for a few years now, and I have gotten great results. I put them in containers, I put them in my raised beds, and they have done amazing. And what I'm going to do is that I don't try to keep one seed per container. I try to go like a little bunch, whatever my finger pinches, whether that's five seeds or eight seeds, they're all going to go in a little bunch. And the reason why I do that is because I like to see that clump growing from, from the very beginning of the plant. And once they're outside, if you worry about space, once they go outside in either a container or in your raised beds or in the ground, they're going to have the space to spread. And I have been doing this for a couple of years now, like I said, and this has been something that I have been doing successfully with, with lemongrass. So that right there, you can see that I have uh, probably five, 10 seeds for each container. And if they all germinate, awesome. If not, then whatever I get in each little container is fine. And I love, I love, love lemongrass. It's one of those plants that just looks very, very attractive, even if you don't use it for cooking or if you don't uh, use it in teas, which is what a lot of people do. I love it. I use it for cooking a couple of times. I have definitely not made lemongrass tea yet. Just don't know why. Um, but if you have been thinking about growing lemongrass, it is very, very slow to get going. Once it starts germinating, it's just kind of on the slow side, just like coleus or rosemary, I guess, if you think about it. But it's one of those plants that I don't have to really worry about doing too much. What I'm going to do is that I am just going to grab a little bit of soil, making a mess here. And then I'm just going to cover those instead of trying to push Instead of trying to push everything down, I'm just going to cover the seeds. They're, the seeds are not that big, so you don't really need to bury anything too deep. Very gently tapping down. I am going to make sure to water these containers very, very well from the top, and then I am going to start bottom watering as well. So wish me luck. Okay, the last on the list for seeds to start today is my lovely coleus. And I love coleus, you guys. I absolutely love, love coleus. And I know that they're all going to do amazing. So let me show you. I have two containers here. They're five by five containers. And I am going to be starting or trying to germinate the seeds uh, two in this container and two in this container right here. And they're just going to be in two rows, one of each. In this row right here, I am going to try to start this dark chocolate. That is going to be amazing if I get close to that, that color, that rich dark color. Then I have Kong Green. Isn't that beautiful? That is just gorgeous. So these two I am going to try to get in this container. This right here is one of my favorites that I grew last year, and this is Mighty Mosaic Coleus. And that for me was probably my favorite coleus that I grew last year from seed. And this year that's definitely going to be a repeat. And over here, Velvet Red. Isn't that just gorgeous? So I hope that I get plenty of germination. I don't know how they'll do, especially the new varieties. So these dark chocolate coleus are pelleted. 
pelleted seats. I don't know if you can see that. So I am going to keep that. Stop check. So I am going to keep those in this side of the container because that's where I have the tag. Perfect. And I put about eight seeds there. Don't really need to put a lot of them because I'm going to have a lot of colis at the end. And I put, even though I put eight seeds there, even if half of them germinate, I mean, that's totally fine. I just want to see how well that colis grows. And, and I love to do these kind of things. I love to just kind of start building my list of favorites. And I am giving them plenty of space just so if, if and when they germinate, that I have plenty of room here to divide them to get them into a bigger container. And if you're wondering where I got these seeds, all of these three seeds, I got them from outside Pry. I have purchased from them before and I have always gotten great results as far as germination goes. So if you're looking for seeds, that's where I got my coleus. And my Mighty Mosaic one I got from Pine Tree Seeds. I love, love Mighty Mosaic last year, you guys. It was one of my favorites. It did amazing in one of my containers. And it was just such a great plant to grow as a foliage in my garden. This one has a lot of seeds. This one comes with a hundred seeds. Can you see those tiny, tiny seeds? I got a hundred of them there. They're going to be hard to, to maneuver. And again, I am just patting very gently. I might just add a little bit of soil, just a little bit. The seeds are so tiny. Hopefully I can show you here in a couple of weeks if any of them are germinating. And we'll see how it goes. And these are the humidity domes that I am going to be using to keep the moisture, to keep the humidity down. And these two trays are going to go under my shelves. The lights are on because I already have microgreens and other seeds going. So I'm just going to use that as space, mine as well. And hopefully here in a couple of weeks, you guys, I can give you an update on how these guys are doing. I hope that this video was helpful. Thank you for being here, you guys, and until the next time.